Good morning, Tom. Good hey. morning. How you doing there, Earl? I'm doing great, Tom. Uh, as always, thank you for allowing us on this con the community connection. Uh, Senator, former Senator Ford and I are here today to endorse and encourage our community to uh, support and look at uh, Clark Jolly. But that's what we're here for today mm -hmm. in regards to uh, Clark uh, is here in our community. Uh, I served with him. Not in, I was in the House. He was in the Senate. But where our paths did cross, we had the great honor of putting about six or seven budgets together in regards to make this state run properly and correctly. And we just we just developed a great working relationship. And I have the highest respect and admiration for this man. And let me make it perfectly clear: we had knocked down, drag out fights, but at the end of the day, <laughs> we still were great friends. And both of us had the heart of this great state. And that's the kind of man this person is. Now, to give another introduction to this individual that wants to go into public life again and be our state treasurer, is former Senator Ford. Hey, oh, John, so how you wonderful. doing? Tom, thanks for having us. Yeah. One of the things I really miss, and one of the few things I miss about not being in the Senate, is getting the opportunity to come in here every Friday when we were in session and talk to, use your radio station and talk to the people of this area and let them know what's going on. You do a great service and we appreciate it. Thank you. But primarily, we're here today with Clark Jolly. Clark and I were elected together in November of 2004. We served 12 years together, term limits, got us both at the same time. Clark and I worked a lot on caucus policy. We worked on legislation. We worked on trying to get other like-minded individuals around the state elected. Had an excellent relationship. Some of the things that I appreciate most about Clark is number one, a couple of areas that he really specialized in was the budgets and on education. But Clark always had the best interest of whoever in this state at mind. The thing that Clark did is you know, you see so much in Washington, D.C. today, it is just knuckles and brawling and everybody hates each other and they can't describe anyone in a fair and gracious term. Clark was not that way. He had true friends that were Democrats, still friends that we served with. And that's what I like about Clark. And Clark was willing to make some changes. He had strong beliefs. He really came in with what he thought we needed to do. But at the end of the day, we're trying to get something done that's going to help Oklahoma. And Clark was willing to make some changes, to do some compromising, and I think that's important. So the combination of those two is why I think Clark will be great as state treasurer. It is a position that is not overly partisan. It's there to take care of the citizens. It runs the 529 college savings account. A lot of things that really impact the citizens of, the, of this state, and it's not overly partisan. And that's why I think Clark has a wonderful opportunity to do that. So Clark, turn it over to you. Oh, uh, thanks so much. And Tom, thanks so much for letting us be on today. And I appreciate uh, these two gentlemen that I served with. Uh, I, I'll tell you, they're, they're no, no two finer gentlemen to represent a community like Bartlesville uh, than Earl Sears and John Ford. And, and Earl's right. We had some. We had some. We had some doozies. Um, we, we had a few uh, back in those days. But you know what? We faced some tremendous challenges uh, when Earl and I were appropriations chairs. Him for the House, myself for the Senate. Um, I know I, I I was the chair for five budgets uh, by myself, and I helped uh, Chairman Myers with uh, sixth and four of the five budgets that Earl and I worked together on. We had less money to spend and appropriate than we had the year prior. And, you know, at that point, we had a, an appropriated budget of right at six and a half to seven billion. And they weren't small change. Uh, we had just our last two years, Earl and I had a shortfall of 878 million and 1.3 billion the next year. And I tell you, uh, Tom, working with this man to try to figure out how we could preserve education funding and not uh, cut a vital service that we provide our, our parents and our school children across the state um, where they couldn't function while not being able to raise taxes and not be able to do those things and have a budget we looked under every couch cushion in the state and it was not it wasn't the most fun job at the time because I mean trying to balance 1.3 billion is really hard but it really served served me well because it forced me those those years forced and Earl and I both uh, and he'll remember this I had a I had a sheet of I had a stack of papers of every revolving fund in the state 
and you had to learn and you had to get familiar with where all of the money was spent, where all the money was saved, where all the money was kept, and and just getting that that familiarity with the state with the state funds that the treasurer now uh, administers. Uh, that really, I think, served me well to prepare me uniquely to, to do the job of state treasurer. Uh, some of our best state treasurers that we've had in the past um, also held uh, the job that Earl or I held as one of our appropriations chairs. And so I really felt that that, that experience really prepared me to, to be able to serve as state treasurer. And then after I left the Senate, Governor Fallon, asked me if I would be willing to serve as one of Oklahoma's three tax commissioners, um, which usually is a political death sentence. If, once you become a tax collector, I, I don't know what you do after that except become an apostle. Um, that's, that's the only thing you can do after that, that that's redeeming. Um, but that gave me the other perspective. You, know, you have the perspective of somebody who knows where all the money is spent, but then you have the perspective of where does all the revenue come from? And you know, the tax commission appropriates 13, 14 billion dollars a year of Oklahoma taxpayers' revenues into different funds, and all of those are then managed and overseen by the treasurer. So, those experiences, being a chairman of appropriations, being the chairman of the tax commission, Governor Stitt named me as the chairman of the tax commission early last year, and that was such a, a huge honor. For the governor to have that much confidence and faith to name me as the chairman of the commission, I think it really just uniquely prepared me to be ready to tackle the job of state treasurer day one. I, I really appreciate what John said that the job of state treasurer really is is not a partisan job. It, it's to make sure and safeguard the security, uh, the liquidity, and the return on state investments, so our fiscal house can be in the best shape possible. And, and as Earl and I both know very well from our tenure, if the state's budget is in okay shape, then the policymakers can really focus on the things that they ran to do. Things like education, things like economic development and job creation and workforce development and making this state truly a top 10 state for tourism, for uh, energy, for aerospace, for all these industries and trying to bring us here for that purpose. If our fiscal house is in order, then the legislature can focus on that. That's why I'm running for state treasurer is because I believe I'm, I've just got the unique experience and background to be able to serve our citizens well and, uh, and do a good job. And so uh, that's why I'm in Bartlesville today is to uh, visit with uh, some of the folks here in this community and, and get to know them better, let them get to know me. and. Uh, they can always learn more at my website, which is www.clarkjolly.com. That's J-O-L-L-E-Y dot uh, com. And so just really glad to be here with you guys today. Well, I'll tell you what, you make a great case. I want to know a little bit more about Clark Jolly, the man, the family, the, and uh, the person. Not, All right. The resume is wonderful. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, first off, uh, she's standing in the corner, but the, the you mentioned my family. My wife, April, is, uh, she's my campaign manager. She's my best friend. Uh, she's the best thing that ever happened uh, to me other than my relationship with Jesus Christ. She's, she's the best thing that ever happened in my world. And um, got uh, four kids. Uh, I got a kid in uh, UCO. She's uh, majoring in history education, Earl, going to be a teacher. There you go. And then I've got uh, my 19-year-old uh, son is at Southwestern. In Weatherford, and he's uh, currently majoring in uh, computer science with a minor in forensics. And then my stepsons are uh, are ten and eight, and uh, the ten year old's going to be a. Uh, he's decided he's going to play professional football as a wide receiver for one year, and and uh, then he's going to go into the army. I think after that, um, I think that's I think that's the career path that he's chosen. If that doesn't work out, he's going to coach. Um, and then her eight year old. Um, he's just a delight. Um, he's still in the, uh, you know, anything on YouTube that, you know, is about games or those types of things and video games. That he he's loves that. Kid. He's just a kid. So, uh, you know, got a family of four. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have a familial tie. I, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but um, my aunt and my uncle were school teachers in Bartlesville years and years ago. I don't know if I, I yeah, don't know if I ever told you. Uh, 
David Clark and Joanne Clark. Oh, going well. Yeah, and uh, they, they both passed away several years ago. Uh, they moved to Texas. So, right. But I think my Uncle David was a, was one of the football coaches here, maybe. Correct. Um, but, uh, but they both... So I came to Barlesville as a kid when they lived here yeah. on occasion. Mm-hmm. But um, Well-respected educators in our community. Well, my family is a bunch of educators. And I'm, 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 I'm the, the youngest uh, in the family that's still in education. I've been teaching at Oklahoma Christian University. Uh, both in their undergrad as well as in their MBA program mm-hmm. uh, for well over a decade. And I teach at Mid-America Christian University as well uh, because education is important. Um, my daughter going into history education, I'm I'm great with that, but my aunt, my uncle, uh, my other aunt, uh, all all teachers, my family you know, is from <clears throat> southeast Oklahoma and southern Georgia. Uh, my dad was a uh, my dad was actually a World War II veteran from Southern Georgia that got transplanted to Oklahoma City uh, when he worked for the Monsanto Corporation. And, mm-hmm. uh, they were bought out by Kermagee and so uh, grew up in Dell City, Oklahoma. Went to Oklahoma Baptist University, got two degrees out there in four years, one in music education so I could be a music teacher, and uh, the other in political science. And then when I figured out the only thing you really can do with a music education political science degree combo is teach political jingles to elementary school kids, um, <laughs> decided to go to law school and uh, opened up my own law practice and did that actually until John and I were elected to the Senate in 2004. And um, as John said, I'm passionate about education and the state treasurer plays a huge role in making making education more attainable and more affordable for families. The 529 savings plan, it makes a huge difference. and. Uh, it's a vital component of one of the things the state treasurer does, and it's one of the reasons why I'm so interested in that in that office is because you get to really change people's lives to help them improve their situation uh, through the 529 plan. It's a great Clark, program. Clark, on 529s, yeah. I still make four automatic deposits every month, right. one for each of my children. I've done that for 15 years, and it is amazing how that how that fund has grown and what it's going to be able to allow them to do. Oh, and John, you know, the flexibility, Congress just opened up and gave more flexibility for uh, parents to use, and grandparents to use mm-hmm. their $529 uh, for not just not just for college, you can also use it now with, for, for career tech and for certificates if you need mm-hmm. to go get a certificate in something, because college just isn't for you and That's not right. what you want to do. <clears throat> uh, but they also now have opened it up so you can use it as a, as a as a vehicle to pay for K-12 expenses as well. Um, and obviously you're not gonna get as much return if, you, if you're if you pulling it out for a K-12 experience as you are for a for a collegiate level experience. But but I, my mother did the same thing for her grandkids, for mm-hmm. my two kids that are in college today. And let me tell you, uh, them having that college savings plan has made a difference and they're gonna be able to get out of school hopefully uh, debt free right. with no college loans, no student loans that they have to pay. And the student loans are devastating to, to a lot of our students. The 529 reduces the reliance on student loans mm-hmm. tremendously. And so, John, I, your, your grandkids are going to be really benefiting from that. Where the state treasurer can help out is number one, making sure that more people know about the 529 and more people are encouraged to invest in the 529. Uh, it's it's you know it's a, a vehicle that your interest your interest is tax free. You don't have to pay anything on it. It's right. great. Um, and when you're investing money for 15, 18 years, mm-hmm. you can build up quite a bit of investment. The other side for the state treasurer is uh, making sure that the vendors that manage uh, the investments for the 529 right. funds are are offering, are offering yes. a good selection of funds that maximize the return. But especially the security of those funds, because the last thing you want to do is invest in a 529 and then see it depreciate over time. But also and the diversity so, of funds. So as a child gets closer to college, you right. may not want to be as aggressive. So the parents really, or grandparents, can control how that's invested. And it's 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 a fantastic vehicle uh, for parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and, and loved ones to be able to to make college or career tech just that more attainable. If we're going to really empower our state to move forward in economic development and workforce development, all three of us know uh, a a quality educated workforce 
is where it begins and where it ends. You've mm -hmm. got to have that. And if you don't have that, your tax structure doesn't matter. None of that other stuff matters. If the business doesn't see that they have an educated workforce that can come in and do the job, they're not going to locate their business there. Right. It's just, it's just, it's just the basics. Well, I tell you what, Clark, this is great. I want to uh, get a couple last words in here with uh, Earl and John. I'll start this way. First of all, I want everybody to know um, we have a Oklahoma State Treasurer right now. His name is uh, Randy McDaniel. I served with him in the house, doing a phenomenal job. Just a, a near and dear friend of mine, and again, just doing everything that needs to be done for this great state. Very dedicated uh, to what he's doing. However, Randy has made a decision that he's not going to run. So we have an open seat. And right now at this broadcasting, at this taping, there are three individuals that are running, Clark being one of them. All I would do is encourage each and every one of you out there to look at the resumes of the other two. They can't even compare to this individual. His heart, his passion, his tenacity to give back to this great state. You've already heard it on this radio station. But Senator Ford and I have seen it firsthand in the 12 years that we served with him. He's just a, a great addition to our community, would make a great state treasurer. And I truly, with, with, with now, without any hesitation, I endorse this man to be our next state treasurer. He would do a phenomenal job. Now, I know Senator Ford agrees with me, but we'll let him use his own words. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And one of the difficult things about running for a state treasurer mm -hmm. is it's statewide. It's not a high-profile office, so you don't get lots of contributions. Money is difficult. But that's why Clark coming up here, having the web page, but for any of you that are listening, know about Clark, or want to know more, call Earl or call me. We would be glad to share with you firsthand experience because the state treasurer, it's not a, hope, it's not a large profile job, but it's very important to so many aspects of this state. So we would appreciate your vote and your call if you'd like any more information. And Tom, once again, Thank you guys for allowing us to do this. Great. Clark, uh, one last to you. What's your website so folks can read uh, about you? I was going to say, I'll, I'll give you two things. If, if people want to call me personally, my phone number is uh, area code 405-642-8686. That's my personal cell. Feel free to call me about anything except a car warranty um, uh, or, or social security fraud. Other than that, call me anytime you want to. Um, and my website is www.clarkjolly, J-O-L-L-E-Y, clarkjolly.com. Thanks so much, Tom. Appreciate you taking the time with us today. All right. Thank you for being on Community Connection.